So in this lesson, we're gonna be shooting a glass of lemonade in what I consider to be one of Natural Light's best kind of scenarios, where we have really heavy backlighting illuminating through a scene. I find that to be really welcoming and really good for food because in some instances, it's important to highlight the back of a glass of beer or a glass of lemonade. This whole scenario is doing it for you. Everything has a glow to it. It looks like summer. It looks amazing. So to do a take on that, I am kind of creating a summer scene here with lemonade and I've got some herbs and, and you know, table and a chair in the background and a bunch of leaves and just kind of that really summery feel as you're going to see when we actually make a capture of this scene. But what I want to do first is kind of go through each component and tell you why I did what I did. So to start off, we have a table. Um, I really like uh, shooting actual tables as opposed to just putting pieces of wood on sawhorses. A real table allows you to actually back off and create an environment that's more believable and less studio-like. So if you have a nice table with, with good legs that has a little patina on it, it's gold. Because if you paint some of these surfaces yourself, they can look forced. You know, that was a style for a while, but I feel like we're moving out of that now, where you, people are really searching for surfaces and tables that have naturally weathered over time and not overboard, where it's really subtle. Um, so this, this is a really good selection. I actually found this table and it has a really nice blue streak um, kind of blue and yellow or you know play well together on set and on top of that I have a surface that I found in the studio that is actually identical to the dimensions of the top of the table but it really improves upon what this table is this has a really kind of brown ruddy kind of look to it this has a really nice clean kind of uh, I don't know Cape Cod kind of look like weathered like a weathered beach table which is what I'm going for um, so what I did is I set this in front of a really broad light source. These windows go all the way up. Today is a little bit cloudy, which is really good for uh, daylight photography, for natural light photography, mostly because the highlights that you see coming through are neutral in color, they're gray. If we had a sunny day, there would be blue sky up in the, uh, up in the sky there and it would be creating these really blue tinted highlights, which I find really unpleasing to the eye. Um, there's no right or wrong on that, but it tends to be that if I shoot um, in shade, but it's a sunny day, the, that blue will leak through into the highlights and I'll have to remove that using one of the HSL sliders in Lightroom or just taking it out manually. It's not something I want to be doing, so a nice gray day is good. We're up here in Seattle uh, at the house studios and they have windows in this studio in all directions. So being that it's a gray day, we can shoot over there, we can shoot here. Sometimes it gets really limiting when you're uh, shooting uh, daylight photography. Uh, you're limited by the hours of the day. You're limited by, you know, the, the color changes. If a cloud moves in front of the sun, your whole exposure has changed. And especially if you're shooting for layers, if you're going to be doing this in layers in Photoshop, you, the, the, the sculpting of the light, the way the light looks in the glasses will change just a little bit from each frame to frame. So you have to be aware of that. It's not a completely controlled environment which some find exciting and some kind of get annoyed by it because it's always changing. So let's get, let's dive into the set here. So there's numerous problems you have to solve. In studio, you build light up, you add lights. In natural light, you're taking light away. So what I've done is I started by adding a tree, you know, just a plant. This is actually a fake plant. Um, and then also a uh, container that has a, a lavender and some other herbs that are, this is lemon balm, so these have some relation to lemonade. Sometimes you see lavender lemonade or something like that. So there's a reason for this being here. And anytime I do props, I'm looking for a reason as to why that prop works or doesn't work, and then I move forward accordingly. When I prop a table, what I'm looking for is are kind of earthy tones that complement and sometimes contrast the main subject. I don't want the prop to be the star of the show unless that's required of the scene. I want the, the hero to be the hero. So what I've done here is I have these kind of muted tones that, that you know, play well with the uh, pinks and the yellows that are in front. I've got this jar here, and when I took a test shot, let's take a test shot right now and see what happens. All right. Make focus. And right now I'm shooting at f3.5, 1 30th of a second, at ISO 100. And we're going to make a shot. And what you see is that the um, plants have actually become silhouetted by the natural light. 
Normally when you think of backlighting, you, you think of the background being kind of washed out and bright and overdone. But if you put a plant in front of backlight, the plant's going to silhouette. It's going to become very dark. So you can either open up your aperture by a stop or two. You can expose for, for a brighter scene, but then some of the highlights in the glasses might start to blow out. So what I'll do is I'll actually put, we're going to put a reflector um, in front of this plant uh, when we shoot the final image. I've also got a mirror. This is just a makeup mirror you buy um, at any home goods store. And what I've done is I've actually sprayed it. I've rubbed it with something called Bestine. Um, and then I sprayed it with Dolan spray. And what it does is it actually mutes the look of the mirror. When you buy a raw mirror, it's going to be the highlights it creates are really contrasty and almost too much. When you dull this down a little bit, you're almost getting a really direct fill card, almost like a spotlight. It's like a Fresnel light in its own way. So it's important to kind of dull down your uh, mirrors a little bit when you purchase them. But I'll tell you, natural light photography, I use them constantly, especially um, with food, because food's not going to reflect the highlight that this would create if you use this in a beer bottle or something that reflects its surroundings. This, this allows you to just highlight a certain area. And with food, you don't have to worry about the reflection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this fortuitously to kind of highlight the, uh, the lavender here. And this is just going to bump up our exposure on the lavender and this kind of plant, which I feel is getting a little bit dark, and it's going to give us a nice background. It's much, you see much more of the purple when I put the mirror on here, whereas before it was just getting too dark. So I'm building my set. I started with my base. I've got my background set, and now we're, kind of, we're going to move things forward a little bit. Um, I like how the chair is positioned. I like how this kind of goes up and, and your eye kind of goes around in circles in the background. And the most important thing is to then place your uh, foreground, you know, props and anything else that goes in the foreground uh, minus the hero, especially if it's going to wilt. Um, but get it as ready as you can for the hero um, item, this being lemonade in this case. But what I'm looking for is from camera angle, I want to know that what I'm placing in the foreground is going to have some room to breathe. I don't want something, just like when you're shooting a model, you don't want a tree branch coming out of her head. I don't want anything, I want there to be sort of a vignette that will allow this to pop out even more. And it just so happened that that was the case in this case. The chair in the background is actually creating a nice little muted area that really allows the, uh, the whole um, glass of lemonade to breathe and have some room to live.